Tapakuma has maintained its natural beauty and its environment, including the forests around it, for generations. And it has played a significant role in the livelihood of people on the Esukaba coast, though they are tucked away in the forest many miles from it. Tapakuma is home to the Lama Sluice, which regulates the water flow between the village's vast wetlands and farmlands of the Esukaba coast. The sluice plays a vital role in ensuring that agricultural activities thrive, as it helps to prevent flooding during the rainy season and maintains water levels during drier periods. For the people of Tapakuma, the Lama sluice is not only essential for farming, but also for maintaining the delicate balance of their ecosystem, allowing the village to sustain its agricultural output while preserving its natural environment. But aside from its own farming and sustainable timber operations, the village sees the need for other economic ventures, and it has young people like Deputy Tushao Ivadni Singh leading the charge. I think it's always been a part of me. I was on the previous council as a secretary, and now I am on this council as a deputy to show. Um, I like to see places move forward. So I was born and raised in Pomeroon. I migrated here after being married, and I saw potential in this village. But it's just that with proper representation, things will happen. And, and with that, I was like, I was thinking, I was having second thoughts of coming back onto the council this room. But then I was like, if I am on the council, it gives me a better opportunity to hear my concern, to represent the people more, and that is what I'm doing. From the $18 million in payments it received last year from Guyana's sale of carbon credits, the village decided on a number of projects, one of them a poultry business. So normally when residents need these things, they'll have to go to Anna Regina, which is a distance, and if you consider they have to pay passage and so on, it's expensive on them. So we rearing these chicken and selling it to the resident at the same price in which they would pay at Anna Regina. Instead of if they have to go to any other area or they have to buy when persons come in, they have to pay more. So for example, Anna Regina will pay like $500. We sell it for the same thing. If somebody comes in here, they'll have to pay like 600 and something dollars. So it's more beneficial to the residents in that way. And it's the same viewpoint the village has regarding its shade house project. And it's strictly organic. So we're using the mold from the from the poultry um, farm to put on the, um, the vegetables. The two projects and others are boosting food security, providing jobs and creating sustainable livelihoods for the residents of Tapakuma. The residents of all indigenous people decide on what projects they want. In Region 2, where Tapakuma lies, Community Development Officer Renal Williams regularly checks on project implementation and vouches for the community-led projects. W would you say that the projects that are decided on really come from the people? They're the ones who decide yes. what happens with the yes. money? The, the, the people themselves decide on what they want with the money. And um, we would guide them. You're sure it's not a group of people who are saying? No, it's, it's not a group of people. Yeah, the people themselves because when these projects have to be planned, we reach at the, they reach at a village general meeting and they would ask the people from the, the Tushau and councillors would bring it to the general meeting and they ask the people what they want with the money or how they can use the money how, and how they can go ahead on spending the money within their village. And whatever the people decide, that is what we work with, that is what they work with. And uh, what is your job then? Basically, my job in Region 2 here, what, what I do is that I monitor these projects. I am here to um, see if they need guidance or they need advice on any um, issue. That is what basically I'm on the ground to do. And do you find that the funds are spent well and well accounted for? Yes. Um, for our Region 2, we, we, we ask each um, village to present a monthly report to us um, so we get a chance to look at how they spend it uh, in, and then we on the ground as well to see we need to see that um, where this money is going and and for region two our two shows and, and village council as well as the LCDS um, small committee in in the village um, they present their reports and it's transparent and we that's how we know that how every cent being spent with the help of the LCDS grant, Tapakuma is on a path toward a brighter future, one that embraces innovation while preserving its cultural roots. 
a picturesque village at the crossroads of tradition and modern development, and the villagers have established their own standards for spending the funding they receive from the sale of carbon credits under the LCDS. Not as how everybody might think that you might just take it and share it out and, and finish with it. That's not the way in which it's supposed to use. You're supposed to do projects in which in the long term it can, it can sustain itself and it can also help to benefit residents. In Tapakuma, the future is being built one chicken, one crop and one dream at a time. Reporting for the newsroom, New Marks.